And that's why Tails Sky Patrol is the best out of all Sonic games and should be used as an example for all of them. Roger, Luke, no time to talk about Sonic. The internet needs you. Let's go. What's that? The internet needs us? I Jove. Let's go, Rog. Let's solve the internet. But where are we going? We're going to a place where we can discuss internet things. Oh, that was a waste of time. So let's solve the internet. What's the deal with all these My Little Ponies anyway? I like me a good strong pony while out adventuring, sure, but not bright pink ones. That's horrible camouflage. Although they might taste good in a Tesco's brand hamburger. My Little Pony Friendship is Magic is a popular cartoon for various reasons. The main reason of this is the writing. While to an outsider it may seem like a cartoon designed for little girls, the team responsible for the show specifically designed it to be enjoyable for adults as well. Like the creators wanted to amuse themselves and create something they can enjoy rather than just do it for the kids. Because of this, the show throws in many jokes for the adults that the kids would not be able to get, such as references to Star Wars. Ugh, well my lunchbox has reference to Star Wars. Everything has reference to Star Wars. Star Wars words have as much meaning as the words the and n. I think what's more important, uh, it's the relentless optimism. Usually happiness and optimism are associated with naivety and stupidity and only cynical and dark fiction can be smart and intelligent because smart things are always depressing. Anyway, most of my friends who love My Little Ponies are guys with tough jobs that completely drain them. So you get the paradox that they need something stupid, something happy in order to break from real life. Yet adults can't stand completely naive happiness because that's too stupid and irritating. I guess shows like Venus and Ferb and My Little Ponies just hits that special sweet spot in being refreshingly lighthearted and fun, yet smart enough that it doesn't feel like watching Teletubbies. Cheerful enough to provide an escape from depressing real life, smart enough not to kill your brain cells. So in case you're wondering, yeah, adults can enjoy My Little Ponies without irony. Irony is used as an excuse for people so they don't have to admit having a guilty pleasure. I don't understand why adults feel ashamed for admitting enjoying child shows and cartoons though, compared with actual adult programming like reality TV shows and soap operas and, and children's cartoons are fucking genius. So for everyone thinking My Little Pony shouldn't be enjoyed by adults, nah, fudge off and go watch whatever mature things you watch like boring cooking shows or a bunch of people playing with a ball, because that's intellectually satisfying. You know, I just can't go on online these days without someone asking me, Hey Luke, you're so awesome and popular and everyone enjoys your amazing art. Ah, the price of being me. But Luke, nobody cares about my character. That indeed is quite a tragedy. Now, becoming as popular as someone that like, say, Angry Video Game Nerd or Nostalgia Critic requires an incredible amount of talent, luck, business savvy, one or two deals with the devil, and the ability to sacrifice your social life and happiness to devote all your energy to the always entertainment hungry internet. We can't all be internet gods, but there are a couple simpler steps you can take to become at least as popular and as amazing as me. Well, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, so it's a waste to draw a picture that only tells five words. What I mean to say is, internet artwork is about interactivity. If you want lots of comments, if you want your audience to interact with the artist, to participate with your creations, you've got to give them something to say. A story, a joke, an emotion, it invites people to share their own feelings, their own experiences. It creates a bond. Drawing a dull picture with a character just standing there, what is the spectator supposed to say about it? Oh, it's a guy, standing there. Uh, good job? Okay, with internet artwork, there's two things you need to keep track of. The energy your audience has to put into your work, and the amount of entertainment they get out of it. So, a black and white picture is hard to see. You have to concentrate hard to see what's on it, and all I get out of it is just a guy standing there. Not very entertaining. Colour the picture, and it takes me less effort to see what's going on, so I'm more willing to look at it, although I still get little entertainment value from it. It's a balancing thing. The more smooth and clear you can draw, the more willing people can forgive you for not being too interesting. Have very good jokes and stories, and people can be more willing to overlook horrible art and god-awful animation as Roger so often demonstrates. I get so many people constantly asking me to look at their character to tell them if their character is good or not. They're always going on and on about little details, their outfits, their history, their fashion, whatever. Getting introduced to a new internet character is as interesting as being introduced to a random person walking down the street. Some people may forge a friendship straight from their shared taste in fashion. I suppose those people exist, 
but they're usually not the type hanging around on the internet with the video game and high fantasy crowd. Look, just like real friends, you get an interest in people with activities. Have a drink, have a laugh, watch a movie. Then you grow into being interested in each other's backstories and whatever. Same with characters. Reading a dry, complicated backstory doesn't make me interested in characters. Events do. Something funny happened, an exciting adventure, some strong visuals, make me interested in your character, a joke, an adventure, something interesting. Then you can earn my respect, attention, and I may want to put effort in learning about their background. Humans are self-serving by default, and people on the internet desire one thing, relief from their boredom. Entertain them, and they can become loyal and interested in you. Expect them to be like your grandma and praise her or have attention to anything you do just for the sake of it, and you'll be lonely. So, moral of the story? Trouble getting people to be interested in your work? Look at your own work, but imagine it was someone else who drew it other than you. Do you give a damn about those drawings, other than the fact it's your character on them? Even when you're just practicing a little or just drawing characters, always make sure there's something of entertainment value included. And if there is, you either suck at entertaining, or it still takes too much energy from the audience to get into it. I mean, heck, I'm sure my horrible audio editing skills and other flaws still scare off a lot of audience members. Production value expectations are high on the internet. What the frig is up with these international days? International Pie Day, International Happiness Day, International Steak and Oral Sex Day. Huh, whoever came up with that one must be a very lonely person indeed. They're just ways to make ordinary days look special. I mean, I like International Talk Like a Pirate Day. Pirates rule, and I am one of the few worshipping the almighty holy saint Blackbeard the bloodthirsty. It's got proper history behind it. Lots of dead people. But what's the amazing ancient history behind National Eat S'mores Day? Of course you could argue that celebrating holidays based on saints like Valentine and such is rather silly when you're not religious. If a random saint you don't believe in is worth a day, I suppose delicious s'mores have an equal right for their own day. Anyway, it's all psychological. Humans are narrative-minded creatures. We get a bigger satisfaction out of our actions when there's somehow a story involved. Being nice to animals and nurses and poetry books in general is boring. Can't be nice all the time. It's not satisfying. But have an amazing Animals Day or Nurse and Poetry Day, and now it's all magical and special. Today, I'm going to make a difference. Our brains aren't trained to look at the world in processes. We don't like the idea of being non-stop nice to people. We want to see a poor creature swoop in, save the day, leave, and assume the creature is all right. A nice beginning and end. We want to be a superhero, not a babysitter. That's why National Days help get people to do more about charity. A day has a beginning and an end, while actually solving a giant problem like saving environments or solving world hunger is a never-ending process. <laughs> I bet there's an office where someone randomly selects a date on a calendar and then randomly picks a word or the first thing that pops into their head. Plop. Pink Fluffy Wallaby? From now on, November the 17th, Pink Fluffy Wallaby Day. Well, I think we sufficiently solved the entire internet today. I must be off. And for you, dear audience, be sure to subscribe, join, donate to, worship, create statues, shrines, secret societies, and religious cults to Roger, Luke, and myself. Goodbye.